Welcome to this video on the coronavirus and how to boost your immune system, brought to you by the College of Naturopathic Medicine. All of us in the senior academic team have joined forces to deliver you with crucial information that you can take away and apply immediately. I will begin by telling you about what the coronavirus actually is and the importance of your immune system at this crucial time. My colleagues will then be telling you about the role of nutrition, as well as introducing you to simple and practical herbal remedies that you can use. So, let's get started. So, first of all, let's go down into the basics of what a virus is. A virus is an extremely simple and basic entity. Viruses are actually around us everywhere. In fact, every time we inhale and we breathe in, we are breathing in viruses. Viruses are the most abundant entity, the most abundant biological entity on the entire planet. So already I want you to think, if we are breathing in viruses all of the time, why aren't we ill all of the time? Why aren't we infected all of the time? Well, one of the main reasons for this will be the immune system. Your body has a very clever defense strategy to stop you from becoming ill and infected. And a lot of this lecture today will be looking at how you can support your own body's defences. The other thing to consider is that viruses come through all different types and species. Some viruses are potentially more dangerous than others. Some viruses are perhaps more intelligent than others. So some of the virus, viruses that we do interact with might just pass by and might not really have any luck causing us disease but some others might potentially be more harmful. So let's think about what a virus is actually made of. It is very simply made up of genetic material such as DNA, and it is surrounded by a coat of protein. And that's it. It is very simple and it's very, very small. That is one of the reasons that viruses can sometimes be difficult for your immune cells, those soldiers in your body, to go and identify and then destroy and overcome. Just to put this into perspective in terms of their size, you can fit about 500 million viruses that cause the common cold onto the head of a pin. So they are extremely small and you can't see them with the human eye. So they're very, very difficult for you to actually see in any way. Now, what viruses do is that they hijack your own body cells. They can't replicate themselves. So what that means is they can't just create their own colony. They need to hijack your body cells so that then they can start creating more in terms of numbers. Now we want to obviously stop that from happening. And once again, it's the immune system that stops that from happening. So think of these viruses trying to hijack your own machinery, your own cell machinery. And by doing so, they can then start to create more in terms of their own numbers. Now, like I said before, viruses are everywhere around us. We have documented about 5,000 in detail, but we know there are many more hundreds of thousands of viruses out there. Just to put this also into perspective, in one litre of seawater, you will find about 100 billion viruses. And every time you go in the sea, you don't come out with a, with a virus, with the flu, with a cold. So again, viruses differ in terms of how well they are designed to cause an infection, but also think about your immune system. This is such an important part that we're gonna be talking to you about in this session. So now let's talk about the coronavirus and specifically the COVID-19 strain. Now the reason we refer to the number 19 is because we first discovered this strain of virus in 2019. Now what we know about the coronavirus is that it does specifically target your respiratory tract, which is your airways and also your lungs. And the actual coat of the virus seems to have a real connection, a real attraction for the cells that line your airways. So if you were to inhale droplets of liquid that contain the virus, that virus is looking around and hunting for those cells lining your airways. And what the virus wants to do is to get into those cells, use your machinery, hijack the cell, and then leak lots of viral material into the mucus in your airways. 
And that's one of the reasons that when people do get a true coronavirus infection, if that goes a bit deeper into the airways especially, they are very likely to get a cough. And that's because the virus has leaked into the mucus. And actually the cough is your body's attempt to try and expel that material. So that's one first important point. Be very wary of trying to suppress the cough because that's your body's attempt to try and get rid of this material and to try and expel it out of your airways. Now the particular strain we're talking about here, the COVID-19 strain, is just one member of this viral family. So the coronavirus family does even include the common cold, which we've all experienced. So what that means is that they all have some similarities in the way in which they are structured. So the virus itself tends to cause the most problems with those individuals who are immune compromised. And this is really important. You've probably heard this already, but those most susceptible will have a weak and vulnerable immune system. So they are more susceptible to this infection. So those people that are on medications that specifically target their immune system to suppress it on purpose, or those people with long-term conditions that also lowers the immune system, will be at a higher risk of developing this infection. Now, one thing that we need to bring back in here is this concept of your immune system. Now, your immune system is made up of lots of different components. We've got things like cells, but also proteins that travel around the body and they act like soldiers trying to defend you against infection. And this is almost like a battle that's constantly going on all of the time, even as I'm talking now, my body is in a battle against different viruses and different other organisms that are trying to cause an infection in my body. But my immune system is winning. So this is a battle and it's about who is going to win that battle. And the purpose of this lecture is to give you all of the information and the tools so that you can best support your body's defences, so that you can tilt towards supporting your immune system and to therefore help your body to overcome any invaders that do try and cause your body some troubles. Now you will have heard many statistics around the COVID-19 virus, one of which will possibly be the mortality rate, meaning the death rate of the virus. And this is important to tell you in that those statistics are based on the people that have actually been identified and tested in a hospital or in a medical setting for having the coronavirus, for having this particular strain. There are many other people out there who have had the coronavirus and this strain in particular, who have actually not had any symptoms at all or have had very mild symptoms and therefore haven't been tested. So what we know is that absolutely that number is far too high. So as we have now already covered, the COVID-19 virus is targeting those cells in your airways. And once it has replicated, it will basically sort of leak into the, uh, the secretions, the mucus in your airways. So if you were to cough when you are actually infected with this virus, the virus itself will be found within the droplets that you expel. And just to put this into perspective, if you were to have an active coronavirus infection and you were experiencing the symptoms of the virus, every time you sneeze, you are releasing about 20,000 droplets that will contain the virus. So it's important to follow some basic instructions here about how we can prevent spread, but also how we can obviously prevent entry on a personal level. So first of all, as you will have heard, it is crucial that we keep washing our hands. Wash your hands with soap using warm water. That's really important, warm to hot water. It doesn't seem to have the same effect with cold water at necessarily killing all of the virus present and you should be doing that for about 20 seconds. So make sure that you are covering all the different parts of your hands. Also, if you do need to cough or sneeze, make sure that you're covering your mouth and your nose. You could either do this into maybe the corner of your elbow, or perhaps you could even do this into a tissue. And if you do cough into a tissue, make sure that you expel the tissue immediately and then wash your hands straight away. Do bear in mind that just by breathing, you are not spreading this virus. You need to actually send droplets into the air. So let's just say you were to cough onto your hands, the droplets would then be on your hands. 
So that's how it's spread. It's not through just normal um, breathing mechanics, just, just so you bear that in mind. So follow simple instructions, washing your hands and making sure that you're covering your mouth and nose when you're coughing and when you're sneezing. So what we've learned is that the COVID-19 virus seems to cause symptoms in two main stages. We've got the first stage of infection where people tend to get generally quite mild symptoms. And in fact, about 80% of cases that we're seeing of this virus tend to sort of pass on by a bit like a common cold. So many people have, have actually experienced COVID-19 and have actually been infected with the virus and have overcome this very well, but without even realizing that they've actually had it and have fought this off. So that's important for you to consider. The initial symptoms really will be a fever, so a high body temperature, as well as a dry cough. And that's because the virus starts irritating your airways and your body is trying to push things out of the airways as best as it can. At this point, people might start also getting some chest pain as that virus may start tracking a bit deeper into this system. And as a result, it may also cause a little bit of shortness of breath. Most people will go through phase one and often go through phase one very lightly. So people will often go through with very few symptoms. If an individual progresses to phase two, it means that the virus has gone deeper into the airways. This generally means that it's gone down into the air sacs of the lungs and the tubes right at the end of the lungs, and it could lead to the symptoms of pneumonia, which is an actual lung infection. Now, this only really happens when the immune defenses have not worked efficiently enough to stop that virus moving deeper and deeper into this body system. I want you to imagine your immune system like layers of defense and the virus is trying to overcome those different layers as best as it possibly can. Now, if we have an individual who has an immune system that is you know, quite weak and makes them quite susceptible to this infection. It's a bit like taking those barriers out of the way so the virus can actually push forwards and get deeper and deeper into the body. So what we want to do as best as possible is to build those barriers, build those defenses, so that even if you were to start getting symptoms of COVID-19, that you at least have those immune defenses in place to stop the infection becoming more deep-seated in your body, because that's really the dangerous part. This second phase here is certainly the very concerning part of the disease. And this is why those individuals who are eventually killed by this virus generally will die. It's because of the depth of the infection. And that's really only in those individuals who do have severe immune compromise. And that's why generally more elderly individuals on lots of medications or with other existing uh, medical diagnoses, that's why they tend to be more affected for that reason. Now, this is also important for later on in this, um, in this lecture, where you will be learning about what you might think about doing if you are infected and if you're in one of those two phases. So that's where some of the herbal support will come in, in terms of what you can do about it. So the immune system is your body's way of defending itself against invaders. And when I say invaders, I'm really talking about things like viruses that are trying to cause an infection. They're trying to hijack your body cells and make lots of colonies so that they can overcome the different parts of your body. So think of this like soldiers. Think of this like a battle. You've got the viruses, which are like foreign soldiers coming into your body, trying to overcome your cells. And then your immune system is alerted to the fact that we've got these cells coming on in, trying to overcome us. And the immune system will hopefully be able to combat and defeat this. The immune system stops us from getting ill all of the time. Now, we often don't really appreciate how important a job the immune system does for us or you know, that, it, that it actually supplies for us because we are generally, the majority of us, not ill every single day. But if we were to take our immune system out of the equation, we would be getting infections constantly. We'd be battling colds that would last for months and months and months and could become very serious infections. So the immune system is doing amazing things for us and we cannot underestimate its importance, particularly when we look 
at the subject of coronavirus, we need to support our body's natural defences. Now, the next part of this session, we'll be looking at what suppresses the immune system, what weakens the immune system. And I just want you at this point to start thinking about that. What do you think weakens your immune system? What do you think weakens your body's ability to defend itself against these invaders? So now let's talk about what will weaken your immune system and what you really should ideally eliminate. First of all, we've got refined sugars. Now when we say refined sugars, we're talking about sugars that have all of the other good nutrients stripped out of them. So they have no vitamins and no minerals. If we compare a refined sugar to something like the sugar you might find in fruit, like an orange, the sugars found in, in oranges will be packed also with vitamins and minerals and other good nutrients that are beneficial to your body. So refined sugars don't have those same nutritional benefits. They don't have those same nourishing benefits to your body. And instead, we know that they are immune suppressing, meaning that they really dampen and weaken your immune system. This is the same for artificial sweeteners as well. So look out for these sugars in the foods that you're eating. And I think most of these will be probably fairly obvious. Things like cakes, things like sweets, chocolate, biscuits. Also look at sugary juices. So consider things like your fruit juices, whether you're getting the uh, actual fresh juice of that, of that fruit or whether it's concentrated and whether sugar has been added to it. Also think about things like sodas, fizzy drinks, um, you know, those sorts of carbonated beverages, they are often packed with sugar, refined sugar, and if it's not refined sugar, it's normally those artificial sweeteners. These really do weaken your immune system. And one thing we know is that when you ingest, when you eat lots of these sugars, they actually push the vitamin C out of your cells. And one thing you probably know about vitamin C is that it's really important for boosting your immune system. So that's the last thing we want. We want to be supporting the immune system, especially now more than ever, so make sure that you try and eliminate those. Next up, we've got coffee. Now, coffee is important because your body will absorb coffee quite quickly, which is why if you do drink coffee, you feel the effects of it quite rapidly. The problem is that your body will absorb coffee so quickly that it prioritizes getting the coffee that you've, that you've drunk over any other nutrients that you've eaten. So it's really important that you try your best to eliminate those to ensure that your body can best absorb those nutrients from your foods. Then we've got cigarettes and alcohol. Both of these bombard the body with toxins. And that overwhelming sort of abundance of toxins that floats around and circulates around the body can also impair the immune system. And again, coming back to this point of what we should be doing now more than ever, we need to think about supporting the immune system rather than impairing it. So make sure those are cut out. We can also think in this point about dairy produce. So things like cow's milk, cow's dairy products. And the reason this is important in relation to COVID-19 is that dairy products are mucus forming. So if you've got a coronavirus infection, this particular strain, as we've already discussed, one of the symptoms would be the cough as the virus creates lots of mucus once it leaves the cells, having created lots of colonies. So one thing we don't want to do is create an ideal environment, an ideal home for that virus to live in. And dairy products make mucus that's also quite sticky, which again makes it more likely that whatever is present is gonna be a bit more difficult to actually expel from your airways. So take those on board, make sure you do your best to eliminate them. So other examples of what also weakens the immune system includes junk food. Now, I think the name junk food probably tells you what you need to really know. Junk food doesn't really have any good nutritional value for us. It doesn't really have any benefits to our body at all. So junk food is high generally in these refined sugars that we've just discussed really weaken and deplete your immune system. And those really important nutrients like vitamin C, which is so crucial for us, but also junk food tends to be very high in processed fats. 
And what I mean by that are fats that are damaged, fats that are unhealthy. And when we ingest them and they start traveling around our body, they can start damaging cells and they can start really depleting the effectiveness of those immune cells. We should also consider processed meats. And when I say processed, I mean meats that have been modified to basically extend their shelf life. Now, when we have this modification process, there are lots of things added into the meat that make it unfortunately very unhealthy. These include things like additives. These also deplete the immune system. We should also be thinking about how we are preparing food. Now by microwaving food, we're introducing a, a means of cooking that will deplete that food of the nutrients within it. We want to make sure that however we're eating our food, we're not doing that. We need to extract those vitamins and those minerals because that's ultimately, the, those are the ingredients that really feed our immune system. And finally, we've got a point here about using alcohol-based mouthwashes. Now the alcohol in some mouthwashes we think might be quite damaging to the antibodies, which are these little immune defensive soldiers that we find within our saliva. So if we're sort of washing this mouthwash around our mouth, then the alcohol content might have an impact in that immune defense that your mouth has. Now, given that this is an infection that enters generally through the nose or the mouth, it makes sense to really optimize this area, this area of defense, so that our body is best positioned to try and fight off anything that we have perhaps either ingested or inhaled. Now, one fact that I find is, is just amazing in relation to the human body is that 70% of your immune system is located within the gut. Now that's quite incredible, 70%. What that tells us is something very simple. Good health in the digestive system, in the gut, leads to good immune health. So if we're trying to support the immune system, we really need to make sure that our digestive system is working and functioning at its absolute best. You can see this with the picture there, how we have these bacteria that are living all around the intestines. That's what's flashing up there. And the bacteria are so important because they live just a few millimeters away from this abundance of immune tissue, of immune cells, of these soldiers. And I want you to imagine that these soldiers are just like us as humans, we need to learn. And you know, we learn in life through experience, through exposure. Think of how maybe you learned to drive. You know, you learned through doing it again and again and again. And your immune system works in the same way. Your immune cells need to see what bacteria look like, see what viruses look like. And by looking at them, it's almost like going through a schooling process. So it's crucial that we have that interaction between those immune cells, those soldiers, and the bacteria that do live within the gut. And another amazing fact is that we have about 100 trillion bacteria living within the intestines. Again, quite an amazing fact. They're there for a reason, because our body lets them live there. We have a good relationship with those bacteria, and that relationship is what strengthens the immune system. So to really help those immune cells learn and develop and evolve better, and really become able to identify a foreign cell and then attack and destroy it, we need to give it that good exposure. We need to give it that training. So we need to make sure that we're feeding those bacteria within the gut, that we're giving them the nutrients that they need to thrive. So first of all, what we can think about are foods that literally feed them. And we call these prebiotics. Now a prebiotic is any food that a bacteria can ingest, that it can eat itself. Now, many of you probably eat prebiotics anyway, but this is the perfect opportunity to start increasing your intake of prebiotic foods. Things like garlic, onions, leeks, oats, chicory, which is a really great prebiotic, as well as asparagus. It's important that you consider how you are cooking those, if you're cooking them, because to some degree, you might actually damage the, the, this sort of 
um, prebiotic content if you overheat the food. So make sure that you're not throwing in garlic when you're cooking and you're completely obliterating it. You need to make sure that you're being a bit careful if you are using this within the cooking process. We've then got foods that you may have heard of called probiotics. Now the probiotics are the actual bacteria. These are the living organisms that flourish in their trillions within your digestive tract or within your intestines. So by giving somebody probiotics and by feeding your own digestive system with these bacteria, you are best supporting this part of your body. So pre, uh, your probiotic foods would, con would include things like sauerkraut, coconut kefir, miso, kimchi, and also kombucha. So these are great ways of really feeding your gut with healthy strains of bacteria. So I now want to talk to you about this concept of the terrain. And when I say the terrain, I'm talking about the environment. I want you to imagine what your body's internal environment is like. Is it healthy? Is it unhealthy? That's basically what we're getting to. Now this concept of the terrain was first developed by a French scientist called Antoine Bichamp. And he said that disease occurs from within the body rather than from outside it. And he said that if you were to get something like a viral infection, that's the after effect rather than the actual cause. He said that the cause of a viral infection was the fact that your body, your environment, was allowing the virus to cause an infection, if that makes sense. So it's the end result. And this is useful because if we think about this idea now of our bodies trying to defend ourselves against infections, we've got to make sure that we optimize our terrain, our environment. We need to be as healthy as we can possibly be so that we don't have that after effect of the viral infection. That is not obviously what we want. So an unhealthy terrain will be formed by things like a lack of good food, a lack of clean water, a lack of exercise, a lack of movement generally. So what we want to do is create a healthy terrain, a healthy environment. And we've already started to talk about it. And that's what the majority of the rest of this lecture is about. It's about what you can do to nourish your body. We don't want to be polluting our body with toxins. We don't want to be, you know, feeding our body with harmful substances. And we certainly want to ensure that we are giving our bodies the very best opportunity to defend itself against the invasion of viruses. And in this case, obviously, we're talking about the coronavirus. At a time when people are more concerned than ever about suffering from a disease, it is vital that we remember just how good our body is at healing itself. Never underestimate the body's power and its ability to fight off things like infections. We must ensure that we feed our body with the right ingredients so that it can fight off things like viruses. We need to ensure that we feed our body with the right nutrition, with good exercise, with clean water, really with simple pillars. We must address those key pillars. And the rest of this seminar will be talking to you about what those other pillars will be. So please make sure that you do remember that point the body will do all the healing that you need. You've just got to make sure you give it all of the ingredients that it needs.